darkness fell down on everybody yesterday. And sure, the only response we can make is hold out a light. A vigil this evening at the place where Ashling Murphy was murdered to remember the life of a young woman, to reflect on the horror of the extreme violence that was visited upon her and her family, and to try to process and come to terms with it all. The President today expressed his sympathies to the Murphy family, describing Ashling's loss as a loss to us all, and that it was time to think about what needs to be done to eliminate violence against women in all aspects of society. Our national school teacher from the beginning of the state has been the bedrock upon which our society was built on, and in many ways Ashling Murphy represented, represented and personified the very best of that tradition uh, of national teaching. And I think it has united the nation in solidarity uh, and in revulsion uh, at, at what has happened. People, including women on their own, were back out walking the Grand Canal here today, but the place where Ashling Murphy was attacked and killed remained sealed off as a crime scene for a third day. The 40-year-old man arrested by Garthi within an hour of the discovery of Ashling's body here on Wednesday afternoon was released last night after Garthi eliminated him from their inquiries and declared he was no longer a suspect in the case. At a press conference yesterday evening before this latest development, the Garda Commissioner was asked if it was possible they had the wrong man. Perhaps you don't have the right person. Well, it, when, when one is in the middle of such a, a, a serious investigation, and we, that we, are, we are treating this with the utmost seriousness, obviously part of that is a keeping an inquiry in mind. There's no point in us jumping to a series of assumptions uh, and then getting this wrong. What we have, and, it, and it's a professional thing to do, is to have the inquiry in mind, and that is, is always in part keeping an open mind as what might be happening and who the suspects might be. We have to follow where the evidence is, not where our hunches might take us. Tullamore and the surrounding area where Ashling grew up and worked remains a town consumed with grief, anger and disbelief at the murder. But there is also real concern here and fear that her killer remains at large. Well, I hope to get who did it anyway. It's very sad, you know, it's tragic. You don't know. You don't know who's... Who it is or what? It's just that girl was out driving, minding her own business, you know. And that to happen to her, and in an area that it happened in as well. So it would leave you very afraid. Your man is still out there, there. No means so. That's the only main thing I hope to God to get him, like. Flags flew at half mast today around Tullamore and at the GAA club where Ashling was a senior team player and where she was a member since she was a child. A vigil is also being held here tonight. She has played Camogie for the club since a young age. She played all the way up along every age group the whole way, into junior and into senior, and played senior with the club last year. She was an excellent person. You couldn't, there's no words really can describe how good she was. She was a role model for every individual young person within the club. She was multi-talented. She gave back so much. Garthi have also identified a new person of interest as part of the investigation into the murder of Ashling Murphy. They're waiting to interview a man who's currently in hospital. RTE News has also learned that another woman reported that she had been followed along the same canal bank at Cap and Kerr two hours before Ashling Murphy was murdered. Garthi would only say this evening they're making significant progress in their investigation and expect developments in the next few days.